Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're taking a look at AP Chemistry Unit 4, Section 7, which is an introduction to oxidation reduction reactions. Now before we jump into what that actually means, let's just review what we've talked about so far as far as chemical reactions. We learned about acid-base reactions in the last video, and we'll talk about those a bit here later on too. But earlier on in this unit, in Section Two, we focus on precipitation reactions. And that's when you have charged ions moving around, swimming around in a solution, and they're basically attracted to each other, forming a solid precipitate. So here's an example of one of those. We'll balance that equation. And if you imagine that we have just a couple of ions around, swimming around in solution, we have a lead two plus ion, a couple of chloride ions, and they get together and they form one uh, unit there of lead to chloride. Notice that in that reaction you basically didn't have any charge changing. You started out with lead ions with a plus two charge and in the final product lead still had a positive two charge as well. And we could say the same thing for chloride. It starts out with a negative one charge and it maintains that same charge in the product state. Electrons were not really transferred. In fact, really the only thing that happened was that these ions got together because of what we could call electrostatic attractions. The fact that positive ions are attracted to negative ions and they get together. Well, in this section we're going to learn about a new type of reaction. This is something that's called an oxidation reduction reaction where electrons are actually transferred over the course of the reaction. So let's say we have this process here, calcium and sulfur yields calcium sulfide, and we can imagine there's one atom of calcium over here, and it, I have it drawn with two valence electrons, as it does, and here I have the sulfur with six valence electrons, and they want to get together. Well, what's going to happen is calcium is going to donate these two valence electrons right here to the sulfur. There's an actual transfer of the electrons, as you can see. And when that happens, or I should say after that happens, you now have calcium with a two plus charge and sulfide with a two negative charge. And then they're able to get together by that electrostatic attraction. But notice that was only able to occur because there was a transfer of electrons. That did not happen in that uh, previous reaction. So in this reaction, we can see that calcium lost electrons and sulfur gained electrons. Now, anytime an atom loses electrons, we can say it is oxidized. Oxidation, very simply put, just means the losing of electrons by an atom or an ion or species in a reaction. And likewise, any time an atom gains electrons, like we have here with sulfur, we say it is reduced. So once again, in its simplest state, the word reduction in, in chemistry just means something that has gained electrons. Uh, it could be an atom, an ion, some other species. Oxidation is losing electrons. Reduction is gaining electrons. Now let's take a look at this from a different point of view. We're going to look at the same reaction where we have calcium starting out with a charge of zero. Okay, In this other case, sulfur is also a neutral atom with a charge of zero. But notice what happens to these two atoms over the course of the reaction. After calcium donates those two electrons, calcium actually has a new charge. The charge of calcium went up. It went from zero up to a positive two. Anytime you have a charge of something that goes up like that, that is also oxidation. And notice that the charge of the sulfur went uh, down. It started out at zero, it went down to negative two. That's another way of looking at a reduction. So a couple ways that we can think about oxidation and reduction. We said oxidation means it loses electrons. In terms of charge, that means its charge goes up. When we talk about reduction, it's gaining electrons. In terms of charge, that means its charge goes uh, down. It's really 
just a couple different ways of saying the same thing, but sometimes there are students that see one way is easier to, to look at than another. Let's just take a look at what we're talking about overall here. In oxidation reduction reactions, or what we're probably going to call redox, that's just a little shorthand name for that, an element is oxidized when it loses electrons, and then something else is going to be reduced when it gains electrons. Now, there are a couple of uh, a nifty mnemonic aids to help you remember this. Some students use Leo the lion goes grr. And basically the idea is that losing electrons oxidation and gaining electrons reduction. So you, hopefully you get it there. Leo the lion goes grr. Some students uh, don't like that and they like to think of an oil rig. Oil rig stands for oxidation is losing Reduction is gaining. So we have a couple of nifty mnemonic aids you can use to help you remember that. Now, redox reactions are all over the place. Now, don't think that redox reactions are something that you've never seen before that we're just introducing for the first time today. To be honest, uh, a lot of reactions that we would normally call single replacement or single displacement reactions that you learned about in your first year chemistry course, those are very often also redox reactions. In fact, a lot of those we're going to be considering here in our upcoming videos about redox. You'll also find that a lot of synthesis reactions, even some decomposition reactions can correctly be classified as redox. The one that we looked at here just a minute ago, that is a synthesis reaction, but it also is a redox. In fact, we're going to find that even combustion reactions are very correctly classified as redox reactions. Let's take a look at an example here. Uh, now, the most common redox reaction that we're going to look at in AP Chemistry involves a metal being added to a metallic ion. Metals reacting with, me with metal ions. Like in this case, magnesium metal is added to a solution of zinc chloride. Now let's write the net ionic equation for this and see what's happening here. We know how to write magnesium. That's just Mg, just plain old Mg. And then we have zinc chloride, which is in a solution, so we have to write it in, in its ionized form. So that's Zn2 plus and Cl negative. Now, when you're writing these redox reactions, you need to understand that if you see a metal, that means it's going to react with a metal ion. So you need to be able to recognize that these two things here, these two species, the magnesium and the zinc, the metal and, and that metal ion are going to react with each other. That means that the chloride, that's just a spectator ion. So you don't even have to worry about the chloride. That's just going to be kind of sitting out on the sidelines here. Now what's going to happen? Well, the magnesium is going to change into some other form of magnesium, and the zinc is going to change into some other form of zinc. Now what other form of magnesium is there? Well, there's there are magnesium ions, aren't there? That's Mg2+. That, that's how you write the, the, the symbol for magnesium ions. It just changes charge to its ion form. How about the zinc ions? Well, the other form of zinc that we know of is just zinc metal, isn't it? So we write that as just Zn. And that's basically what's happening. The metal is going to be oxidized, and the metal ion is going to be reduced into its metal form. That's, in its simplest form, what's going to happen in a whole lot of these redox reactions. So if we leave out the spectator ion, we can realize that the magnesium is oxidized, the zinc ions are reduced, and we can write the overall net ionic equation like this. Mg solid plus Zn2 plus in its aqueous form yields Mg2 plus in its aqueous form and zinc solid. And generally speaking, when we have reactions like this, like I said, the metals are oxidized, the metal ions end up being reduced. Now, as you look at this redox reaction, it's fairly simple to isolate the charge that everything has. We know that that zinc has a plus two charge. That magnesium has a plus two charge. These elements, magnesium and zinc, those are, well, those are zero. They don't have any charge. But as we go through some of these other examples, it's going to be a little harder to tell what the charge or the oxidation state, as we sometimes call it, of these species are. So what we're going to do is devote an entire video 
to how to determine oxidation state. That's going to be coming up in our next video. So uh, join me for that. Hope if you uh, if you learn something from this video, give me a thumbs up if you would, and join me for my next video about oxidation state. Thanks for watching.